government may have to immediately restructure its tax exemption profile and make it sector specific in order to have a fair verification of the incentives worth more than a trillion shillings given out annually. We noted that uh, this has been to a tune of 1.4 trillion and this is a, a, a huge gap. This money can be used to facilitate maybe other sectors, especially the unfunded priorities in the education sector, health sector, among others. However, the Ministry of Finance is rejecting that assertion, arguing that companies that are being exempted from tax is returning dividends. But I can assure you, when you look at the research and development that has gone into making of local beer, from sorghum, from uh, maize, uh, from uh, bananas. bananas, and so many things, you can't believe it. It's because we gave an incentive to the companies and said, we are going to give you a lower excise duty. To be able, for you to be able to do this, and they've done that. The Uganda Manufacturers Association, on its part, says that each sector, which is mainly constrained by high cost of energy and credit, needs more incentives. Can we not think so much about the harmful incentives and instead look at how can it be done better? Uganda Revenue Authority, which is struggling to raise the country's tax to GDP ratio, maintains tax exemptions are bad business. They are very smart, our investors. You can tell that these guys invest a lot in tax planning and their role is to look for a cap in the policy and, 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 and exploit it. So we as tax administrators, we are always also on the, on the, on the lookout. To urge the Minister of Finance, who are the policy makers, of uh, this, this particular aspect to make available those guidelines to the people so that they are first of all aware of what is entailed in the guideline and they can see how they can expand that and how they can also maybe utilize the opportunity to apply where necessary. Reina Ojon, NTV Business.